Restore us again and cause your face to shine. Turn to us, oh yeah, and we shall be saved. We shall be saved.
Shalom, shalom, beloved. Welcome back to the channel. <clears throat> and if, uh, if you're watching this, you're probably interested in the calendar. And as you may know, we have just come to the end of the Passover season. Um, you know, for this particular study, I wanted to look at where um, where they actually are in the desert. And in particular, fast forward up to three weeks from now, when they come to a place called Aleem. And I also want to point out um, the pattern that's laid out here. You guys, if you're interested in the calendar or, or understanding the calendar of the Bible, did you know that the Bible alone proves the calendar? And I'm going to show you in this little study. If you're hung up on, you know, you can't figure out the continuous seven-day cycle, and, and listen, I talked to a couple who were part of the Zadok calendar, uh, very intelligent people. One is a civil engineer, and he could not reckon the, the Zadok calendar. But he could see how this pattern fits perfectly with the divine uh, pattern the fathers laid out in the Maseroth, the, the clock in the sky. Um, so please come along with me in this journey. We are roughly one week out from Passover, a uh, few days over. And we're going to go to a particular point in that journey that's one month in to a place called Aline. And so uh, that looks like this on Google Earth, because we can actually know where that is, you guys. That's really cool about this story is um, it can be proven <laughs> With the archaeology. Previously, before this, this knowledge was known, and, and it was Ron Wyatt and Penny Caldwell that gave us the true location of the mount called Sinai, where the Hebrews went and got um, the law from the creator. Let me just back it out and kind of look at this, get some, some idea. Um, historically, and from the Catholic Church, we are told that Sinai is here in, in the peninsula known as the Sinai of Egypt. Okay, but the Bible tells us that the that Sinai is actually in Arabia over here. Now, what's really interesting is no archaeology shows that a, up to a million people were in this area. But there's lots of evidence over here that this is the area where um, the mountain of the creator, Yahuwah's mountain, Mount Sinai, yes, and where the law was given. So we're going to fast forward because they're roughly a little over one week out. And here's what's really cool. This It's irrelevant because they could have gone like a number of ways. They could have gone around, around this way and crossed over, through the mountains and crossed over, um, or, you know, a longer road um, to, to cross over to get to this point. That is irrelevant. So we're not going to focus on that right now. I want to take you directly to the place um, where we're told in Exodus 16, Exodus 15, Exodus 16, where um, they were. And so the archaeology should show um, from what, is, what it says there, that there should be some wells, some date palm trees, and um, we can't find that over in, in Egypt. So... Uh, also, on either side of this gulf here, in this um, Gulf of Aqaba, there there are monuments put there. And it, it was said that it's from Solomon to commemorate where the crossing was. So we have that as well. Markers, historical markers, right? Again, does not match up over on, on the sign over here where they say St. Catherine's is where Sinai is. That is not correct, you guys. I'm going to show you. All the places I have highlighted here are found in the scriptures, okay? So so just know that. So we're going to focus from this point where they crossed over and they came to a place called Aleem. That's this place right here. All right, Exodus 15, 27 talks about this first, but then uh, in Exodus 16, you know, it, you know tells them, you know, this is, this is, uh, Actually, when they've when they've gone a whole month and they've run through the the things that they took out from Egypt, like supplies, 
they're getting kind of hungry and they're complaining and they're murmuring and they're complaining and Moses brought us out here to die. There's no food. Imagine that you're out. There's no Wendy's. There's no McDonald's, a million people walking around. There's hardly any water. Right. And they're freaking out. Moses, you brought us out here to die. Okay. Imagine that they come up this, this Canyon here. And listen, you guys, since the time of um, Jim and, Penny Caldwell and uh, Ron Wyatt, uh, hundreds of others have gone to this site and verified. Okay, so they crossed over and came over here, came up these can this canyon here, all the way to a place called Aleem. And the reason they stopped here because they got animals with them is there's twelve wells, fresh water, and there is was in the time of the Bible. Now there's more because of you know when they drop dates and they grow new trees. But originally in the story, there's 70 date trees here. This was a little oasis. And by the way, in the canyons of, of high mountains, the, you know, this would be shaded in certain parts of the day. Okay. All the way up this canyon, up until they got to the places where it starts to plane out. And then they would be in the summit. I want to back out and kind of look at the terrain here a little bit. You see their journey um, coming up these um water flows of watersheds okay and these are well known by bedouin by the way for thousands of years notice the blackening of the top of this this mountain range because that is very significant you can see it extends a very long way and standing at the base of some of these uh, points it says it looks like sapphire at the top. I mean, that's the testimony you got. It says that in the scriptures. All right. It needs to be pointed out. So they're here at Talim. I mean, excuse me, Alim. With 70 wells. You can find this in Exodus 15, 27. All right. But we're going to go to Exodus 16 and pick up from there because this is actually the place, you guys. And if you want to prove the calendar, this is the place where you lays out the pattern and he gives you the Sabbath. It's not in Genesis, you guys. That's a pattern the Father lays out for himself. When he gives it to us, it's after the Exodus, and it's at Elim in Exodus 16. So let's go there and read together what it says. And by the way, when Constantine, if you're count, counting Omer right now, this is where it originates. But yet you will see that the text does not tell you to count Omer. The reason why the Omer is counted is because Constantine in 322, 321 made an edict that the Jews can no longer keep the Feast of Weeks. That's what this says, the Feast of Week. You're counting weeks, which is, by the way, connected to wheat. That's the whole reason why we're counting it, besides the feast that, that, that bookends the, the feast. It's about the grain. The father is teaching them that his feasts are ingrained in the growth cycle of these grains. Follow? Okay. And here's where this is all set up. He comes to this place. They're one month in. They're complaining. They don't, they don't have anything. They're, they're just, they've gone through the resources. You can imagine. It's, it's pretty tough. One million plus people. And this is what happens. Exodus 16, and they took their journey from Elim, and all the congregation of the children of Israel came to, to the wilderness of sin, so that so which, which is just a little, little bit further, you guys. So, but I'm picking up here at Elim because sin is just a little bit further. Um, and they haven't got to the mountain of Sinai yet, by the way. That needs to be pointed out as well. Because of what happens here, okay. Which is between Elim and Sinai. Okay, so sin, the place of sin, is in between the place of Elim and Sinai. So let's go back to the map. So they stop here to, to get refreshed right here. And they're on their way up to Sinai. And this is a steady climb, by the way. From the ocean all the way to Sinai is a steady incline. Think about this. 
I don't know if you've ever been in a place like that. Hawaii's like that. You're either going uphill or downhill. And going uphill constantly in your journey is not pleasant. It will work you out. It's very tiring. You're going to sweat. You're going to complain. And so they're going uphill to, to where um, they get to the mountain, which is this is the, this is the whole range here. And, and they actually go to this point place, the Rock of Horat, where they get water. So they would come up and gone probably this way and circle around. This is very high ridges here. But this is where Horab, where they went. So between Elim and Sin. So Sin is between Sinai and Elim, in between. All right. So let's go back to the text. Back to the text. And read. Is between Elim and Sinai. Listen to this. On the 15th day of the second month after departing out of the land of Egypt, which means this is exactly one month later. Everybody follow. So the father is synchronizing them on his calendar and he's using the 15th day. This is important. Every time you see a mention of, of the Sabbath in the scriptures, Nine times out of ten, it's going to be the 15th day. Unless we're talking about the 10th day or something like that. It's the 15th day. And the 10th day is a special occasion. That's that's part of the feast. But the regular count, the 15th day is always, every month, a Shabbat. And it's a full moon. Okay? So exactly one month later is when we're documenting this. Mark that down. And the whole congregation of the children of Israel murmured against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. What did I just tell you? They were complaining because this is pretty tough. And the children of Israel said unto them, would, would Elohim, we have died by the hand of Yahuwah in the land of Egypt when we sat by the flesh pots and we did eat the bread to the full for ye have brought us in forth into the wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. They're, you know, they're, they're, they're pretty hungry right now. Been a month of walking, right? Never mind the great miracle they just saw with the, the parting of the sea. Now they're complaining, right? Then said Yehoah unto Moses, Behold, I will rain bread from heaven for you, and the people shall go out and gather a certain rate every day. That rate is an omer. Then I might prove them whether they walk in my law or no. Let me just say this. They were collecting Omer every day for 40 years because that's how you have fed them. They weren't planting grain. They weren't making harvests. Their clothes didn't wear out. Their shoes didn't wear out. Yahuwah was taking care of every one of their needs. And he is about to get them on a, on a pattern which he was establishing in Exodus, you guys. Long before Babylon, long before the Julian and the Gregorian calendar of Rome. Mark that in your brain, okay? And it shall come to pass that on the sixth day that they shall prepare, which that they will bring in. You see what's happening? He's giving them the work week here. He is going to prove them. He's testing them whether they're going to walk in my law or not. And you know what? This is a good proving ground for those of you that are going to keep and be obedient to Yahuwah right now in this moment with this calendar, as this is the proving ground for you right here. He is laying it out for you and giving you precise numbers that cannot be disputed. This is the Torah. This is Exodus 16. This is not Jubilees. This is not Enoch. He's laying it out right here for you, the pattern. And he's telling you that I might prove them whether they will walk in my law or no. Because you know what? Some of them didn't want to do it. Some of them want to stay in Egypt and do the things that Egyptians did. How many know that to be true? And he says that I'm going to give you manna from heaven and that you shall collect every day. And on the sixth day, 
you shall collect twice as much because on the seventh day, you're going to rest. Nowhere in there does he tell you day one is day one of the month. The day one of the work week is day one of the month. Matter of fact, he's going to start this pattern in the middle of the month at full moon time. So we're talking about the 16th day of the month is going to be the very first work day, day one. See how this can be? You can have not only, you got two things going on here, day one of the week, but day 16 of the month. You see how that works? That's the truth. Day one of their work week was day 16 of the month. This is when he started this calendar. And interesting how it's Exodus 16. These are not accidents, you guys. Hidden in plain sight all this time. Then said you unto Moses, Behold, I will reign from heaven for you, and all the people shall go out and gather a certain rate every day that I may prove them whether they walk in my law or no. Because if you are doing this every Saturday, which is a Roman pagan calendar, has nothing to do with you. You're not walking in his law. And it shall come to pass on the sixth day that they shall prepare that which they brought in. And it shall be twice as much as they gather daily. Moses and Aaron said unto the children of Israel at Eden, then ye shall know that Yahuwah hath brought you out of the land of Egypt. And in the morning, then you shall see the glory of Yahuwah, for he hath, for he heareth your murmurings against Yahuwah. And what we are, that ye murmur against us. And Moses says, this shall be when Yahuwah shall give you in the evening flesh to eat. This is when the quails come down. At the evening. Of the 15th, because the morning of the 16th is the first day of gathering manna. Day one of the work week is day 16 of the month, you guys. You cannot go around that. And I challenge anybody who is on a continuous seven day cycle to explain this to me how Yahuwah lays out the calendar. And oh, by the way, it falls with the moon. And it's perfect even to this day that these days fall with the moon cycle. Why? Because they didn't have cell phones in ancient uh, in ancient times when they're in the desert. So what does Yahuwah use? He uses the sun, moon, and stars. Because everyone can reconcile that in those times, you guys. And in the morning, bread to the full, for Yahuwah heareth your murmurings, which ye murmured against him. And what are we? Your murmurings are not against us, but against Yahuwah. And Moses spake unto Aaron and said to the congregation of Israel, Come near before Yahuwah, for he hath heard your murmurings, and it will and it came to pass that Aaron spoke unto the whole congregation of the children of Israel that looked toward the wilderness. And behold, the glory of Yahuwah appeared in the cloud. And Yahuwah spoke unto Moses, saying, I have heard the murmurings of the children of Israel, speaking to them, saying, even ye shall eat flesh in the morning. Ye shall be filled with bread. Again, this is the 15th day. And they're resting. And ye shall know that I am Yahuwah your Elohim. And it came to pass that the even the quails came up and covered the camp. And in the morning, dew lay around in the host. And when the dew was laid on the, upon the and when the dew that lay was gone up, behold, upon the face of the wilderness, there lay a small round thing. It's like a mushroom. As small as the hoar frost to the ground. And when the children of Israel saw it, they said to one another, it is manna. So they wist not what it was. And Moses said unto them, it is the bread, it is the bread in which Yahuwah hath given you to eat. This is the thing which Yahuwah hath commanded, gather all, gather of it, every man according to his eating, and all myrrh for every man. This is the only place where you see this measurement where it doesn't command you to count an omer, but we're measuring out every day from this point forward for work weeks, because this is a count of a work week, brother, sister, to Shabbat. 
And Omer for every man according to the number of persons, take ye every man for them which are in his tents. And the children of Israel did so, and gathered some more and some less. And when they did, uh, when they did met it with an Omer, he that gathered had much had nothing uh, over, and he that gathered litter had no lack. But they gathered every man according to his eating. And Moses said, Let no man leave of it until the morning. Notwithstanding, they hearkened not unto Moses. But some of them left it of, the, of until the morning, and it bred worms, and it stank, and Moses was wroth with them. Attention to detail. And they gathered it every morning, every morning according to his eating, and when the sun waxed hot, it melted. Notice how it says here, the Sabbath observed. And notice what number this is, the 22nd. And it came to pass. That on the sixth day, they gathered twice as much bread. Now, if we got there on the 15th, and we worked for six days, gathering twice as much on the sixth day, you guys, you know what's going to happen? You get on this pattern right here. Look at this. So we got there on, let's see, it's like a weatherman, huh? <laughs> right there. We got there on the 15th. This is when all the text happens. He says, I'm going to give you manna, and you're going to gather it for six days, right? So from the 16th, gathering six days to the 21st, right? Resting on the seventh day, which is this day, the 22nd. You see how that is? 8, 15, 22nd, 29 is a pattern that this scripture is laying out. Even though it doesn't say the 22nd or 29th or 8th, the fact that it has the 18th as the seventh day, you cannot get around it. Your mathematics, I don't care if you use common core, it's not going to work. You are delusional if you believe that the Sabbath is anything other then he ate 15, 22, and 29. And I can show you seven months in the scriptures that declare that the 15th day is the Sabbath. Okay, so we're on this pattern that the Father establishes in Exodus 16. And then the Sabbath is observed, and look, notice it's, it's the 22nd verse. That is not a coincidence, you guys. <laughs> not, not at all. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm not sharing the screen. This is what I'm looking at. The 22nd day is the Shabbat. And it came to pass on the sixth day that it gathered twice as much bread, two omers for one man, because it's twice as much. And all the rulers of the congregation came and told Moses. And he said unto them, this is that which you have commanded. Tomorrow is the rest of the Holy Sabbath. What day is that? Hmm. So if they started on the 16th, uh, 16th, right here, and they worked six days, which is behind me, 16, 17, 18, 19, 21 is the sixth day, gathering twice as much, resting on the seventh day. What day is that? Hmm, it's the 22nd. And it's also the 22nd verse here. And it also started in the 16th chapter, which was the day they started working. Coincidence? There are no coincidences with the Father, you guys. None. <laughs> He's encrypted this so much that if you get you can't get this, then you're not supposed to see this calendar. And I would worry about that. Really. Okay. The Holy Sabbath, 22nd day, and unto, unto you, bake that which ye shall bake today, and see it that, it, that ye will see it, and that which remaineth overlay for you for you to be kept until morning, and they laid it up until morning, and Moses bade, and he did not and it did not stink, neither was it any worm therein. This is the only day of the week where, where when you store it up, it wasn't going to stink and it wasn't going to rot. And this was a miracle. Okay. So they're seeing all of these confirmations, and guess what? They did this for 40 years. It starts right here. 
and it tells you that it's the Sabbath. We're, this is not Jonathan speculating, okay? It's clear we're starting the Sabbath right here. And Moses said to that day, for it is a day of Sabbath unto Yahuwah. Today ye shall not find it in the field. Six days you shall gather, but on the Sabbath day, which is the Sabbath. By the way, does not have to be the seventh day of the month, you guys, because that's a different count. Monthly counts are different than weekly counts. Why? Well, we got this thing called the new moon. You have to observe the new moon. You have to. You have to. The scriptures declare it. If you don't observe the new moon, guess what? You're wrong, period. 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 The moon determines the Moedim, you guys. And I didn't go outside the Bible for that. That's scripture. And it came to pass that there went out some of the people on the seventh day to gather, and they found none. And they said unto Moses, How long refuse ye to keep the commandments of my laws? See, for that who hath given you the Sabbath, therefore he given you the sixth day, the bread of the days, of, excuse me, the bread of two days. Abide ye every man in this place, and let none go out on the seventh day. So that they, the people, rested on the seventh day of the week, not the month. The month is set up, it's set apart with this number right here. The very first day is not counted in the week. It's counted as new moon. So that means your first day of the month is going to be day two, right? So day one, uh, see that day one of your first work week is day two, which makes your first Shabbat day eight. It's still day seven, but it's the eighth day of the month. You see how it is? It's two counts that's going on. This is how they did it in ancient times. This is not how we do today on the Gregarian. But I'm, just, I'm telling you, and I'd bet the farm on this. This is what is going on. Because this pattern remains. And if you keep this, your, your Passover will be the same day every year. It'll be 14, 15th. At harvest time, your moon is going to look at like a certain way. And that means your Passover is going to be a certain moon, which is a full moon, high Sabbath. And anything different from year to year, and you say that people know your moon looks different every year because you don't regard it. Somehow you got on our, our calendar this year, and I find that to be so intriguing because what we're going to see next year is they will be 10 days off from where we are today. This year. You watch. That's my prediction. You watch. We'll, we'll remember this. 4-15-2023, we're going to remember this. We're going to come back to this video one year from now, and I'm going to point this out and prove to you that the seven-day continuous count cycle and not, not observing a new moon, you will accumulate one day every month up to one, it could be two, depending on the, the, the length of the new moon, 10 days a year. And this is why Remnant House has got 375 days some years between Passover to Passover, 10 more days than are on their normal calendar. <clears throat> so right here, you guys, is where you can find the... Um, the, the pattern is laid out. It's on the 16th day in Exodus 16, the first day of the week that we're working. And so that means our first Shabbat is going to be what? The 22nd day, as it says here. And that's not an accident. It's like that. And by the way, what's encoded here? Confirms. <laughs> it's a lunar solar calendar. Okay, so hands down, just like we know from Isaiah 53 that Yeshua is our Messiah, Exodus 16, hands down, it is not the Zadok calendar, you guys. It does not fit. If you got to intercalate and make your days fit, it's wrong. It's wrong. But you can find it right here. This is not the only place either, you guys, that proves this pattern. There are other places, and we're going to get into that 
at another time. I don't want to overwhelm you, but I want to break off enough of this for you to consume yourself and go and research it yourself. It's simple math. It's simple math. And I challenge you to challenge some of these people that are saying it's a continuous seventh day and it doesn't fall on these days. As the Bible says, you want, <laughs> you want to see someone get uncomfortable? And I had this encounter with a seven-day Adventist that was at the Passover that I was at. And it was uh, it was interesting to see them uh, back up in a corner and not be able to answer for what they believed. He could not explain the seven-day continuous cycle that Saturday was the Shabbat. He, couldn't, he could not prove that from the scriptures. And everything I threw at him, he could not rebut. And it made him very uncomfortable. And uh, it was very evident to the 40 plus people that were watching uh, that were there live. So it doesn't surprise me that some people will not debate. They want to declare is because they can't debate. They cannot disprove this calendar with their scriptures. They cannot. The word is true. And Yahuwah's calendar is true, you guys. And this is going to spread like wildfire. No matter what happens to the messenger, this message will remain. Shalom to you. May Yahuwah bless you. You guys, I'll see you in the next video uh, shortly after this. Shalom.